Hi all, I thought we could have another wonderful aesthetic experience and this time slightly different from before I have my good friend Paul Georgiou here and we're going to look at some of his most amazing sacrifices throughout his chess career. Hi Paul. Yeah, hi Trevor, this should be uh, interesting. Some of my sacrifices from uh, the earlier days of my, my career I'll be looking at today. And we'll, we'll go in chronological order. So we'll go back to the year 1979, the London Junior Team Championship. Your opponent, Scott Johnson, how old, how old were you in 1979? Uh, I was 10. 10. So you had a very promising looking uh, attack here on the G file and your opponent had just played g6. Yes, I have a very strong position and many moves should win here. e5 mm. followed by taking on g6 should win. Mm. Also h4, h5. Yes. But uh, I came up with a rather sneaky uh, idea and I played queen d2. So you've offered your opponent some bait here, this yes. e-pawn. It's, it's a bit of a, a sneaky trap which he fell into so and he uh, played bishop takes e4 as I hoped mm. and uh, I took it and he took back and he probably thought he was doing quite well now as he won a pawn and he's forking my queen and rook but I'd, uh, I'd seen all this and now I played uh, the crushing uh, move Ah, shall we ask if our YouTubers can spot it Mind you, it's fairly obvious. <laughs> it is fairly obvious. Okay, rook takes g6. <laughs> rook takes uh, g6. Crashing through with on that g file, and uh, he uh, he recaptured, and I played rook takes g6. Now, of course, if the king goes to h7, uh, then queen h6 is uh, is made. Yeah, that's mate one. So he went to f7, and I still played queen h6. And there's actually uh, no defence to the various threats of uh, of mate, except by giving up very many pieces. Yeah, did that thrill you at the time? This this little sacrifice that worked out so well. Well, I was quite pleased. And he actually played uh, played knight f8, which uh, doesn't work. And I played queen g7. Mm. Just looking back, um, an alternative line after um, rook takes g6. There's also rook g7 mate here. Yeah, also rook g7 as well. Mm. After rook takes g6, he has an alternative, yeah. which we should look at briefly. Uh, after the first rook takes g6. After the first rook g6? Yeah, he can play king f8, when I have quite a nice mate. Again, queen h6, king e7, rook takes e6. Ah, yes. f takes, queen g7. So, yes. <laughs> which is quite nice. That was pretty cool, all for a ten-year-old. And, and th that was... Uh, an early example of my sacrificial uh, play. Mm. Okay, let's go back to now. That's one year later. Against someone called Demetrius Agnos, a very very strong player who later become became a chess grandmaster and moved to Greece. Yes, I think he had his name changed to something. Well, at some point, uh, I, I think he actually just went back to his original name, ah, which is Anagnostopoulos. <laughs> It's quite difficult, that one. Um, a, a, a bit like the actress in Friends, you probably know, Jennifer Aniston, yeah. whose real name is uh, Anastopoulos. Ah. So it's similar to that. Right. So it looks as though there's a classic battle on d5 here in Sicilian, but his king has some safety issues, and he just played rook cg8 here. But which looks like it's doubled on g2, but of course I'm, I can just take on h7, so really he's not threatening anything. Yeah. And the problem is my grip on d5 is so strong mm. that he's pretty helpless uh, yeah. in this position. Yeah. So I, I just decide to build up with rook d, d3. Yeah. He plays queen d8. Queen d8. And so I just carry on, queen h6. Now the queen h6 is, is quite funny because you're, you're in the process of actually trebling on the h file potentially. Yes, yeah. this is the idea. My idea is uh, Queen e7. rook h4. And you just shuffle that rook. It's remarkable. He can't really really do much. Well, I'm, I'm going to triple on the h file. I'm going to sacrifice my queen on h7. I, I think a key move to make sure black hadn't got any counts play was when you played b4 because you're keeping the knight out of c5. Yes. He, would, he would maybe hope for some central pressure more than this. I mean, you know, a couple of moves ago, black should have tried something like a5 and mm. d5, just mm. something to... Uh, mm. 
open up the game a bit. So you've got what's called sometimes a free hand. A lot of annotators use yeah. the term free hand. Yeah. So you can just slowly build up the pressure and you, you treble. So now rook d h three. It's not an Alakine's gun technically. The queen is usually behind the rooks in the Alakine gun scenario, isn't it? Yeah, you know, it's not an Alakine's uh, but it's gun. In the reverse. Um Queen heads. But it's unusual to triple in front of uh, a, a pawn. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, King G8, and now I just simply played Queen takes G7. Yep. King takes, mm. Rook takes, and made him with the two rooks. King G8. Yeah. Rook H8. Rook 3 to H7. Yeah. A cute finish. What did he say after the game? Was he. Uh... I, I can't remember. <laughs> but um. I, I never beat him again. <laughs> That was your first and only time. My first and only win. And in 1981, a year later, okay, you're against a player called Boyne yeah. in the Lloyds Bank Junior Invitation. Yep, uh, Andrew Boyne and I have a, a pretty strong attack uh, on the uh, king side uh, mm. here. So you're threatening his a7 pawn. He defends that. The queen d7. But and, and his bishop on a8 is obviously a terrible piece, so I play rook b3. Yeah. And now I'm just threatening to take on uh, on b6. Yeah. So he defends that with king b7. King b7, which is probably not best. Nice play rook e5. Hmm. And now you're threatening simply to swing the rook, maybe? Swing the rook, of course, and uh, take on a7. Hmm. My bishop is very good, because while it's attacking, it can also drop back to c1 if needed to defend against back rank mates. Hmm. So he played... Uh, King c8. Oh, actually, if he plays queen takes d4 here, then? Then, uh, well, uh, rook a5. Of course, yes, this is what you mentioned, that any check, there's bishop c1. And uh, that looks pretty crushing. It, it is pretty, pretty crushing. His queen's out of, out of the picture there. So he actually maybe was uh, in tr big trouble now, king with king c8. Yes, uh, and, and uh, now I play very obvious sacrifice, rook takes b6, yeah. and if he takes that, then queen takes a8, uh, king c7, and then, uh, well, anything really, rook discover check anywhere, yeah. and then, Horrible. then I'll take the queen. queen, that's, uh, and it'll be with check, so he's got no time to, yes, queen d6, we can just take with check, and then loads of material up, probably rook takes maybe, bishop, better. Bishop takes, rook, rook takes maybe stronger than bishop takes on d6, I would guess. Oh no, it's check. The queen's on prees. Yeah. I think if you run it with check and just take on f8 here. Actually, it isn't rookie seven. Uh, rookie seven is mate, isn't it? If you go back. Rookie seven. Oh, mate. just rookie seven. Yes, even more elegant. That's we're true. we're not we're not checking with engines today, by the way. <laughs> so please please forgive these little inaccuracies. Rookie seven is definitely stronger. Um, okay. We did a bit of checking beforehand, though. Uh, so, um, okay, so that that would be crushing. So he actually played bishop b7, and and and, and uh, which is basically just giving up. So I just play queen takes a7, yeah. and then the rest is is trivial. Yeah, e, f6, e5. I and could play more accurate moves, but it doesn't really matter. And now just he just gave up basically. He resigned here. Yeah, yeah. His king didn't seem that safe. No. And now, again, in 1981, there was the City Chess under, under 161, the BCF at the time, which is now ECF, English Chess Federation, of the British Chess Federation at the time. So your opponent, Mark, sorry, Ad, Mark Adkins? Yes, Mark Adkins. Uh, just played Rook takes F8. And you again, you've got this situation where you seem to have a free hand a little bit on, on the king side. He hasn't got any quick counterplay. Well, Black played rather passively, and I think this is just winning now. I play Queen G4. Mm. The idea is just to switch to H4 and mate on H7. Mm. So he played King G7. King G7, which looks like a defence, because now he can play the Rook to H8. Yes. Un unfortunately... Uh, one move too late. Though. Well, it, it's not it's one move too late. I can uh, a new idea instead. I can play Knight H5. Ah, yeah. Which is... Uh, Quite uh, pretty. Actually, one of the problems here is that his knight on d7 is undefended. That makes a difference. And now, of course, if, if he uh, takes it, yes, uh, then knight takes e6. It's, it's a du double check. It's double check. Both pieces are on prees. Yes, but 
they can't be taken, obviously. Yeah. And it'll be mating on G7, for example. Whenever the uh, king goes. And the pawn on H5 actually gets in the uh, way. Mm. So, so wherever the king goes, I'm going to drop the knight on F6. Mm. And the fact that it's just threatening the knight yeah. means black has no time to uh, defend. So he went to H6, mm. and I went knight F6. Yes, hitting the knight. And uh, and he took it. He takes And I took. But now this, the king's really had it. Queen H4 is unstoppable. Yeah. If Yeah, the king's actually not going anywhere. It's it's just remarkable the incredible bind you, you had here in the position. Um, but yeah, the, the knight H5 really is the knockout blow, I think, here. Impressive, I think, for your, for your age at the time. Um, and of course, you were actually very, very good. So much you won the British under 16 at one point in your career. I what? did that later on. Yeah. So you were pr a pretty strong junior, as it goes. Uh, now, in the Islington Open of 1982, you were playing against um, Martin Allen. Alan Martin. Sorry, pardon me. <laughs> Alan Martin. And um, he had just played. We just swapped Brooks on C8. Yes. And now I played knight d5. So threatening knight e7. Knight e7. And this is, this is quite problematic mm. because if, if he plays uh, something like uh, queen b7, I've got uh, queen e8. Oh. So that's uh, that's oh. no good. Oh. His, his knight on a6 is also yeah. quite a bad piece. Yeah. And I, th I think he's got big problems here. Mm -hmm. So bishop f8. Bishop f8 was logical to defend that square, but now I uh, switch plans and I play uh, knight f6 check. Mm. King g7, queen e5. Queen e5, yes, offering the bishop. So another powerful double check. Oh no, yes, pardon me, another powerful double check is introduced. So he took the bishop here on a3. Bishop on a3. I guess he's pretty stuck for moves though if he doesn't, uh, in any case. It, it, I can't see. I'm just threatening something like knight d7, winning a piece, on f8, if, if, he, no, if nothing else. So if he tries queen e6, well, um, if he plays queen e6, then uh, and say knight d7. Yes, just winning the uh, bishop yeah. on uh, f8 uh, minimum. Uh, yeah, and it, 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 well, you can just take your and take there. Yeah, so if you play queen takes queen. No, no, he can play queen takes queen after knight d7. Oh. He can play queen takes queen. Mm. Then I can play bishop takes f8. Oh, it's And then, then just take on e5. Yes. Well, so he's in big trouble here. And um, he played bishop takes a3. Uh, and now um, double checks are not quite so effective. Um, mm. Knight h5, he's got king h6. And I can't quite see what I'm doing there. Yeah. I think maybe I can actually win his queen um, with a skewer. Queen g7, does this work? It does look quite yeah. promising. Yeah, but he could go to g5 as well. Yeah. But okay, so if he goes to h5, then uh, if he takes on h5, then queen takes h7. If he can go to g4, it's, 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 getting, yeah. it's getting very fiddly. Mm. Now I'm two pieces down. So yeah. what move I play is much better, mm. which is knight g4, which just simply wins his queen. Yeah, the queen is loose here. So if king, he resigned here, so if king f8. Then queen h8. And then you would just win the queen next. And if he goes to g8, then I play knight h6. And which comes to the same thing. Same thing, yeah. Cool. Um, now you played against a bit of a legend here in a simul in 1983. Uh, so you're white against. Um, uh, how would you pronounce his name, Paul? Lubomir Thatchnik. Yeah. Thatchnik, yeah. He was a strong grandmaster. He was certainly in the worst top 50 or so, mm. around about this time. What what country? You can start with it. Yeah, he's a Czechoslovakian. Czechoslovakian. Oh. Okay. And, and I've actually sacrificed a rooker unsoundly earlier on, but he uh, failed to find the right continuation, and now he's in all sorts of uh, mm. trouble. Anyway, so he plays Queen D6. Yeah. And... Bishop f4, and, and he has to carry on defending e7. Yes, so he's forced out of the e6 square here. If he goes to c6, you just take on e7. Uh, so he goes to c5, leaving that e6 square behind. If he'd gone to f6, then bishop g5 would have been uh, decisive. Yeah. So, so queen c5 was the only move to carry on defending. Yeah. 
but now um, it seems to be attacking your rook. But, it, um, he's attacking my rook, but uh, Queen E6 check just finishes things off. Uh, Bishop E5, uh, King H6, and now Queen F7. Queen F7 just getting a bit more time by offering the rook. Yeah, he, he can uh, he can have the rook if he wants. So, but there's nothing, nothing else he can do. Mm. If rook H8, then I just I can just take it. So rook H8, you can just play Bishop takes rook. Yeah, and e7 is on, and he's just yeah. And if he took, off. if he took the rook here, well, he, he did take, and, and he didn't realize he was losing. So queen g7, king h5, queen h7, and it's a uh, mate in two. See, so king g4, maybe, maybe three. Queen, queen takes, and then now either here or here, it's still queen takes f5. Queen f5 is made. Yes, he can put bishop in the way he wants as well. The ways to move, but uh, oh yes. Very good. Okay, so that was a nice win against the Grandmaster. Simultaneous. Now, in 1984, a year later, uh, you were playing here with black pieces. Yeah, against uh, Claudio Gentile. Mm. In the uh, Griefs and Grants Weekend Congress. Uh, and, and this is um, probably my favourite uh, move of all time that I've, uh, that I've played. I, I, I set a, a very very clever trap in this position, mm. and I, I see he was angling to sacrifice uh, material on b5 or c4. Actually, in fact, that's one thing computers don't tend to do. They don't usually have bad positions anyway, but they don't tend to create traps, which might have some possibility. But when you set traps, Paul, they're not usually compromising your position too badly, are they? No, the it, it's not at all. I'm, I'm, I'm well, it's not at all, in fact, here. I'm manoeuvring my king to the yeah. a-file, mm. which is logical, actually. Yeah. Mm. So rook hb1, it looks as though, yeah. Uh, and now I set my, my trap with king b7, yeah. inviting him to uh, play what he wanted to play anyway, which he did. So he played rook takes b5, and I took, and he took back. And now I played king a6. Yeah. And it's all set up for... Uh, his, his position is still OK at the moment, mm. if he plays something like a4. But uh, I thought he was going to fall for the trap. Yeah. Which uh, he uh, he did, and he played the very tempting looking move. Bishop takes c4, and now ah okay. Let, let's see our YouTubers what they would play here if we gave them ten seconds to think about this. Uh, this is a really neat one. So you might want to pause the video here. What would you play with black? Okay, I hope okay. have you found some some of you found Paul's move. Uh, okay, well, I mean, if I take on c4, actually, I get uh, mated fairly quickly off the queen yeah. takes c6. The disaster. And rook takes a5. Yes. Yeah. So I hope nobody uh, suggested that. No. The, the move I actually played was uh, the rather pretty knight takes e5, yeah. after which all his pieces are on prees at the same time. It, it looks pretty tricky. Actually, yes, he, yes, everything's really attacked. Everything, all his pieces are attacked, and he's actually completely lost. And he did actually resign, he just resigned after after yeah. some thought. Because it's also a carnivorous king scenario, isn't it? If well, his, his his king is uh, in takes check, and then you could like even take this. Ab absolutely, my my king or is even maybe even consider this one as well. Actually, well, but king takes is yeah. So that's that's a disaster. And of course, if, if pawn takes knight, then I just play pawn takes bishop check. Discover check, and then I take his rook. Carnivorous king, and your king's pretty safe after taking that rook, actually. Yep. The queen's defending with the squares. So there's not much to do after knight takes e5. Any discovered checks just backfire. If rook c5. Rook c5. And I just play uh, knight takes c4. Extinguishing the check. And I have a rook up. Takes. So, uh, takes. There's only one check here. Uh, it's not. King a7. Yeah, it doesn't do much after. Not good enough. No. Wow. Neat. So, uh, I enjoy playing that move. That's one of your favourites then, huh? Absolutely. Yeah. Now, in 1985, a year later, um, uh, Niall uh, Carlton uh, was your opponent. And uh, quite a violent game came from a French exchange variation. <laughs> And he just played h6, and you blocked up a little bit his lines of attack. Yeah, he played French exchange, but certainly with no intention to draw. He certainly was playing for the win, yeah. and a very double-edged game uh, mm. followed. Mm. So 
You must have been pleased to have some king safety, except if he can creep in to the dark squares, which is very unlikely at the moment. Um, well, he, he's, he, my, my knight is better than his bishop. Yeah. My king is also safer. Mm. It's just that he's, he's a pawn up, and he actually picks up another pawn now. Mm. But unfortunately, uh, that allows me to... Uh, this is in the championship you actually won, the British Under-16 Championship. Yes, this is the British Under-16. So yeah. now I launch a powerful attack, we're starting with a, with a nice uh, nice move, which is uh, E3. Nice line opening, opening that diagonal. But it's oh. not actually to open that diagonal. That's not the purpose of it. It's actually to block off his uh, his queen. Oh yes, from 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 the queen side as well. Yes. multi-purpose move. You yeah. could say, but I, I actually it can also get the queen in. But I never, I, I never actually used the the idea of queen f5. Uh -huh. Okay, so f takes e, and now queen uh, queen b5. So threatening mate, and one. threatening uh, mate. But also because you block that queen, you've got access to d3 now as well. Yes, I mean, if you play say bishop. Uh, c1 here for example then uh, something like uh, knight c3 check lands him in all sorts of trouble yeah so he actually played b4 played b4 which is uh, looks a bit uh, is a bit alarming but is not clear how to break through after the b4 pawn is actually uh, defended by a uh, you go back. Yeah, the B4 is actually defended by a bishop and a, and a pawn. Yeah. So it's not clear how I'm breaking through. Yeah. I think taking on A5. Taking on you A5. Must have considered that as well. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's possible. It, it does look uh, slightly slow. King B2. King B2. King B2. I'm not sure what I'm doing. I think taking on B4 now probably doesn't work. Yeah. Because the king slips away to C2 at the end. Yeah. So I, I found something more incisive. I played Queen D3. Mm. Another benefit of. Uh, of the e3 move and he played king b2 and now i play ah, the ah should we let our youtubers um see if they can spot the next move so if we give you 10 seconds here you might want to pause the video black to play okay in this position, you played rook takes e3. Rook takes e3. So you're getting hold of that c3 square, trying to deflect the bishop away from the c3 here. Well, it just destroys this. Basically, I'm threatening queen takes a3 now. Yeah. And uh, queen b3, and he, but he's got no choice. He has to actually take it. Yeah. So, and I play queen c3. Yeah. And he drops his king back. To b1. Now, if he went to a2 here, I mean, you just. Then, then I've, I've got similar ideas. I think I can just play uh, knight takes b4. I can't actually remember now, but I think I think knight takes <laughs> b4. It's a long time ago. Yeah, I don't uh, think he's got time for any checks. You're threatening just to play here and here if he plays rook b1. Yes, well, rook b1, rook a4 is mate. Mm. So I'm threatening rook a4 mating and also queen b2 mating. Yeah, and if, if, of course, if his bishop moves, I can just take his queen. Ah, yes. If, if there's no mate. Yes. I think there is a mate, but I, 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 I think you just you just play this anyway here, and you just mate on on a one. Yes. So um, that's pretty crushing. So we actually played king b one, and I played knight takes b four. Yeah. And and he resigned. Owing to the uh, multiple yeah. threats. Yes, it looks as though there's no defence really at all. No, yeah. no, there is there is no no defence. He's got no checks. Yeah, he must have. Yeah, his attack's a bit too slow there. So now we'll go to um, a year later, the Islington Open. And okay, here you were playing against Barnes in the Islington Open of 1986 from a sharp theoretical modern Benoni, the line with f4 and bishop b5 check. The, the, the time Arnold variation, also known sometimes as a flick knife attack, because it's uh, rather unsubtle blasting through the centre before developing uh, the pieces. Mm -hmm. and, and this was quite a popular line in uh, in those days. I thought to most it had been a refutation since um, Kasparov beat John Nunn in the Olympiad with it, I think after Nunn had written a book on the Bologna. I can't, I can't remember, around time... Oh no, sorry, this is not this line, no, he had played... It was in that variation earlier. Pardon me, not not in this variation. It was, he he tried to. He, I think that dented the popularity already. The F four line, 
against the Benoni. Well, around about this time, this was, you know, quite a th hot theoretical uh, line. So Queen H4 check. Um, and you were saying apparently King D2 is yeah, a move Yeah, that is in the live book. A few people have played King D2, but more common is this move G3. So you're offering the rook here. So knight takes, you just take. Yeah, knight take, and he plays queen takes. Of course it's a rook for two pieces. Yeah. But then black's got a couple of pawns as well. So it's about material equal. Yeah. So bishop takes. Bishop takes. Bishop take takes. Here. And you play queen g4 check. Queen g4 check. Which is quite nifty, actually, because if f5 you can continue with another That's check. Swing across to a4. Yeah. Um, but maybe theoretically that might be one of the better moves, apparently, when we did a brief check. Vengeance, that might be one of the best moves, but uh, he played king d8, so now I played bishop g5 and he played f6. Now I just continue the sacrificial mode, yeah. But ah. well, yeah, <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, you castled queenside, yeah, I castled queenside. So you're protecting the knight here, yeah, I mean, it does a lot of things really. Um, but I think a really good move now, I mean, this, this is really quite accurate, and we, we verified with Vengeance how accurate this was. In this position, I wonder what our YouTubers would play here if we gave them 10 seconds uh, in this position. Uh, starting from now. Okay, I've, I've, although I, I assume Queen G5 it might be okay, uh, but you played, I think... Knight H3. Uh, it might even be better than Queen G5. So it actually blocks the queen uh, away from the h5 square. If you had played knight f3, then apparently quite annoying is queen h5. Well, the queen gets back into the game. Uh, yeah. So knight quicker. h3 blocks the h5. And it's nice to take with the knight um, as well, isn't it, potentially? Yeah. Or the queen. Um, so he his queen's attacked here, and he played queen g2. Probably h2 is a better square, but anyway. Mm. Um, so so now I just carry on with the, also the knight can now join in the attack as well. Yeah. So queen takes g5 check, mm -hmm. king d7, queen g4 check, king d8. Of course he can't ever go to the e file because that will just allow rook e1. Mm. Yeah. So now I play knight f4, gaining another tempo. Yeah. And uh, you got that lovely e6 landing on the, on the e6 square. So knight e6, king e7. And now no, if I take his bishop, he can play queen h6. Ah, that would be naughty, wouldn't it? And, naughty and check. He's, probably, he's probably still in big trouble if he does that, but yeah. uh, he can get some kind of defence going there. So, so now I play d6, yeah. uh, king e8, and I just take on g7. With check. Check. So queen check. d7, g8, and now go play king b1 after which he's defenceless. Apparently rook f1 is a bit mm. stronger, but mm. king b1 is uh, mm. is fine. Yeah, cutting out queen h6 check, and also I can, I can now bring my knight on c3 in, yeah. as well via d5 or e4. So say queen queen h6. Um, well, if it's queen h6, I can just play. Uh, well, we can just go back to. I think rook f1 is incredibly powerful. It makes the um, yeah the, the knight immune. Yeah, for example, check queen e6 here. that's made. Amazing next move. I'm sure there are other moves. Yeah, crushing. So now we'll go one year later, the UK Open Team Championship against Dominic Mackle, who recently uh, had a very good British Championship, very strong player, Dominic Mackle. Uh, so you've got this annoying pin, and he plays Queen E5. Yes, he, he, he's in rather a lot of trouble here, but uh, it's a nice finish. So I take on uh, F6, Bishop takes F6, Knight takes Rook E1. Yep. I'm actually winning a piece. Ah, his queen's kind of stranded. Because if he plays queen d5, I think that's a disaster, isn't it? Then I play knight takes f6. Oh, that's pretty cute, really, isn't it? Does and it now queen, queen takes, rook takes h7. Yeah, so it's... You think you miss, must have miscalculated here, losing a piece. So knight e4, giving up a piece. So that's the first queen sacrifice. And now, so rook takes e4. Mm. Queen takes f5. Uh, knight g3. Yeah. Queen g6, rook e to h4, yep. and f5, the only move to defend that diagonal. Offering the hope maybe of... Is, it's still good for you, even if you did take on h7. I would think so, yes. Yeah, but you played... Ah, I wonder if our YouTubers can find this cute final move even more incisive 
It's a nice word, incisive, isn't it? More that means more accurate, more. What does incisive actually mean? Anyway, it's yes. a more incisive move than rook h7. Um, I wonder if. So if I gave everyone ten seconds here, what would you play with white? Okay, Paul played the really crushing queen g5, which seems to win the queen. Yeah, it ends the game uh, instantly. Because uh, if queen takes queen, then uh, rook takes h7 is uh, is mate. Yes, so uh, queen takes queen is, is the threat. Uh, so if queen takes queen, rook h7 is checkmate. So there's actually nothing black can do here. No. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to take his queen next move, so, uh, so he yeah. resigned. Yeah. Now let's go. This tournament, which is one of my favourites, uh, the Lloyd's about Masters. It was a fantastic tournament to play in. And let's see, you were black in this position against Peter Sore, who uh, has collected at least five IM norms. He had a brilliant, brilliant tournament recently. Very, very strong player. Um, you know, very close to being an IM, isn't he officially? But I mean, yeah, he's been, been, been a decent FM for a long time now. Yeah, and and he played uh, a five here. Yeah, we're not going to go through these moves in great depth. But basically, he's just destroying my my queen size. So I just decided to sacrifice it in its entirety and uh, <laughs> just go for his uh, king. So you took on a five, yeah, and he took on c five, and I played h four. But that does signify some hope that you've got h four. Uh, but if I guess if he had played h four himself, then the g four square would be a pain. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, or the g file. You you are threatening to to come down that g file anyway. Um, so h four. And he played c takes d6, attacking my rook, mm. creating lots of passed pawns. I played rook across the g7, mm. uh, c5, on they go, and I carry on in. So queen b2, knight h5, hitting f4, c6, queen takes d6, bishop d4, knight h6. So he's, he's going for my rook as well. So queen b8, queen takes, rook takes. Also, keep my, my rook is defending the c7 uh, square. So it allows him oh, to yes. uh, try to promote his pawn. So knight h4, bishop takes g7, bishop takes, uh, rook c2, defending g2, bishop d4, check, king f1, knight f3. Yeah. Now he plays c7. And there's this check here? Yeah, king e1. Check. And yeah. I think he should take a draw here with yeah. king f1. Yeah. So instead. He takes here because he thinks he he's quinning. And, well, he is queening. and no, he's actually now the exchange and the cold queen up. So this is actually quite, in my endpoint theory I've introduced recently on the channel, this is quite an attractive endpoint to stop calculation here with white. It's quite lucrative uh, in some respects. You know, you'd think there isn't that much time for black to do anything. Because there's no actual major, uh, major check that works that well. The check wouldn't work that well here. F or would it? F F two would just take it. Yeah, you you just snap it off. White is so much material up, he can give. Yeah, a, that'll just be mopping up all your pieces. Yes, but amazingly, so he needed to really calculate further here to to keep the draw in hand. This position is is dangerous now after G two. I think Black, Black is actually just winning, even though mm. I'm the exchange and uh, and the queen down. Because <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to queen when I have such a raging attack. Possibly the f pawn will be a, a threat as well. Mm. Um, so he actually tries to stop me queening by giving up vast amounts of material. Okay, this doesn't actually up. work. Knight e2, knight takes. And he gets some checks in at least. And he gets a large number of checks in. But uh, as long as he can't take the pawn on g2, yeah. The knight defending g1 square, he's always going to be losing if I can get away from the checks. So king takes g1. No, you equals queen and a uh, piece up and winning easily. Yeah. Wow. Now we'll go. So that's to sort, of, sort of fun you can have with the king's Indian at times. Yes, you give up your queen side as a, as a major sort of sacrifice of an entire side of the board. It's quite fun to do, isn't it? Dude, maybe we should go back and start playing it again. Now this was against someone who is a grandmaster, a very very good player indeed. Aaron Sumscrow, one of the UK grandmasters, and this was back in 1988, the London Under 21. He wasn't a grandmaster at the time, we should no, say. No, but he, he was a good 2500 plus player. Yeah. Anyway, so I played um, 
it's, it started off with a rather offbeat opening with G6, Bishop G7, B6, Bishop B7 and A6. Hippopotamus. Mm. Hippopotamus. Hippopotamus type <laughs> opening. And this actually um, turned into a kind of King's Indian uh, position. Mm. And here I played a very thematic sacrifice with G3. Oh, but hold on. His, he played actually B5. Oh, he played B5, yes. G3, the very thematic yeah. sacrifice. Opens up some dark squares. Which was introduced by Nidorf, I believe, at Zurich, 1953. Mm. You give up a pawn and uh, start attacking those dark squares on the king side. So he took, and knight took, he put bishop takes, knight h5, mm. bishop h2, knight gf4. Yeah. Well, I've got plenty of play for a pawn now. For example, queen g5 is now on the cards, yeah. Queen, and he played bishop f1, and I did indeed play uh, queen, g5. queen g5, with ideas of knight h3, etc. Yeah. And that it, kind, it, of, uh, kind of thing. thing. But Bishop H3, and, and he uh, gave up his his bishop, possibly unwisely, and I took back, and he tried to escape with his king. Mm. So I played Rook F6 uh, to double on the uh, G file, yeah. and he played Knight E2. Obviously, he didn't like those knights on F4. He's trying to get rid of the other one as well. Yeah. So A takes B5, and uh, the problem with uh, Queen takes B5 is that allows Knight D3 check. Oh. Yeah, at least winning the rook or carrying on the attack. Winning the rook or possibly more, I don't know. But um, so he played knight back to b two, and I played rook g six, mm. and he's got some uh, some problems now I think. But he made them worse by playing knight takes f four. Yes, it's liberating this bishop on this free problem. my my king's Indian bishop. So e takes f four yeah. with bishop d four check ideas. So he plays rook a d one. Yeah, and now I finished off with the. Uh, Queen G3, King E2. Ah, oh. should we should we test uh, our YouTubers what the combination is from here? What what would you play with Black in this position? If we gave you ten seconds, you might want to pause the video. So starting from now. Actually, I think this is one of my favourite games of yours, Paul, when you show me this. Yeah, I think it's one of your favourites. Yes, I play <laughs> Bishop takes B2, B Queen takes, and now Queen takes G2. Yeah, which win and queen. wins a piece. On the other side of the board. So sometimes it doesn't have to be about the mating attack, it's just about winning material as a side effect. So after Bishop takes, Rook takes, I'll be a piece up. Bishop takes, Rook takes G2, Yeah. King D3, Rook takes B2. Right. But he resigned now. He Queen resigned G after Queen G2. After Queen G2. Now the Lloyds Bank Masters of 1992, you played against the great David Bronstein. Another one of your, your favourites. Yeah. And you had a very good position from the opening here, and he felt he was in a bit of trouble then, perhaps. Yeah, I, I think he's, he's uh, quite a bit worse, but... Uh, it's not that terrible. I, mean, I played f5, yeah. and he played a very bad move. He played h5, yeah. which just improves my position no end, because I carry him with what I'm going to do anyway. Mm. f6, yeah. and he takes, takes, bishop d6, and now g5. Yeah, and, I've got, and I've got the g6 breakthrough coming. He'd yeah. much rather put more back on h7. Mm. Oh, yes, to defend against that. Yeah. So he can't the queen side here. Uh, I played rook e1. Just aiming to play bishop e5. To get rid of his better bishop and keep the lock on the position? Yes, absolutely. He played queen a6, mm. bishop e5, and he played d4. Mm. We try to activate those two bishops. Yes, this one, or this, this queen, this diagonal here. I just played queen f4. Mm. Of course, d4 is a bit weak now as well. Mm. I could have taken it, but really, that's not a good idea. It just allows the bishop c6 activating, so. He did bishop c5 to defend it. Yeah. And now rook e2. With various ideas. Oh, Switching yes. to c2 maybe. Yes. Or doubling rooks. Yes. Anyway, he plays bishop c6. Playing your rook. Uh, rook g1. Just helping prepare g6. Yeah, but I'm ready to play rook d5. And I play g6, which I think just, just wins. Mm. And he takes it, and I play rook takes. Very dangerous pass pawn has emerged here on f6. Yes, I think it's... Something he can do really. F7, rook f8, rook takes e6, 
queen b5, bishop g7, you know, bishop g7. You can just take that. Take, take, and rook e8. Yes. And okay, so now bishop d6 is hitting my queen, so I just take it. Yep. Sacrificing my queen temporary, temporarily. Yeah. And I get a new queen. And his rook on d6 is on breeze again as well. And while all this is happening, this knight's pretty good on c1, stopping any counterplay, really. Knight on c1 defending uh, yeah. my king. So you resign there. But you didn't have a post mortem with the great uh, bronze thing. You didn't have uh, much of a post mortem. No, I don't think he's very happy. Uh, okay. Um, in a year later, um, Barnet against Wellington City. Uh, so you are white against David Faulkner. Yes, D Ray Queen B five. And and uh I'm I'm a pawn up and winning quite comfortably anyway. Mm. But I, I decided to launch uh, quite a nice little attack with uh, with H four. Mm. His king looks quite safe, but I'm going to remove most of its defences in the next few moves. So he plays Queen E two. If he can get your queen side it looks as though his pawns might be dangerous theoretically. But I don't think he has time. So I play h5. Mm. And he can't take it with the queen because that will uh, leave a6 on breeze. Yeah. And I'm threatening h6 check, mm. which will leave his king in uh, some trouble. So he took it. Yeah, there's always a queen c4 check as well to watch out for if he did munch. Well, it, it, as it's, well. it's, it's possible, yes. Uh, if, for example, like this, uh, check and queen. Mind you, your rooks attack. Well, I'm attacking the rook on a on a6 anyway from c8. Uh, yeah. Okay, so well, I, I, I must got moves like queen e8 as well. Mm. Okay, anyway. so after h5, he took with the pawn. Yeah, he took with the pawn, and I play bishop f4 with a very subtle little threat of I bishop h6. The bishop h6 and open up his uh, his king. Yeah. So he took on b2. I carried on with bishop h6, d took, and I took on f8, d went to g6. Now th this is quite remarkable what you played, I mean, although there might be technical other moves. Okay, so... Yeah, I, I, I just played rook c5, which is my idea from, uh, from before. Ah, yeah. This is a really fascinating idea that you, you had this visualised actually, after queen takes a2. I wonder if our YouTubers can spot the idea. Uh, here, so white to play, an amazingly powerful move in the position exists. So if we give you 10 seconds, you might want to pause the video here. Okay, did anybody suggest queen g8 check? If you did, you lose 10 points, because black can actually just take it with a queen on a2. Yeah, it's not that. It's not that. It's um, more subtle. It's more subtle. Oh, I just played uh, f4, which is... Uh, Mm. Rather a nice uh, mm. move. And after Queen E two, F four supports this next crushing move, which is Rook G five check. The sacrifice in the Rook. F takes G five now. F five is made. It's made. Yeah, everything's stopping the king, even his own pawns, stopping the king. It's checkmate. Yeah, neat finish indeed. Now against um, Mike. Uh, Kabilka here, you had a very good position with kind of a free hand on the king side. Yeah, he's played the opening rather poorly and... Uh, this was in the British Championship, Harry Baines, 1993. You played now Queen D2. And perhaps this... Actually, it was asked on Reddit recently about castling early. And I think you really need... Even any moves which need to be calculated, really. It's not just... There isn't these general rules of casting early. Castling here is, is really just asking for a ready-made attack. I, th I think casting here probably just loses. Yeah. Uh, um, bishop h6, just yeah. and and now he has to try something like c5 if he wants the game yeah. to carry on. But he just played c6, yeah. so if nothing's happening, yeah. so I just played h4, yeah. and it's all uh, it's all going downhill now. So he plays bishop g4, ostensibly to stop h5, but I can just play it anyway. Yeah. If he takes with a bishop, of course I'll just play rook takes, g takes, queen g5. Yeah. So. Uh, Bishop isn't doing uh, much good, mm. so I'm just opening the h file and bringing the queen to h6. So he plays uh, f6, and I play h takes, h takes, bishop takes g7, king takes, queen to h6, king f7, queen check, 
if he goes to e8, I can just take on uh, g6 and take the bishop. Yeah. Yeah. So he goes to... There may even be better, but uh, yeah. that's good enough. Yeah, minimum. So he goes to e6. Oh, now this is neat. So white's play here. I wonder if our YouTubers can guess, if we give you 10 seconds starting from now, what would you play with white? Okay, uh, it was just knight g5 check. It actually, at minimum, opens up the cover of the town bishop as well. So, um, if if he did, if he plays pawn takes knight, then bishop takes g4, uh, rook f5, queen takes g6, yeah, and the rook will go and mm. his fish will disappear. Yeah, possibly better than what he played. He played uh, king f5, um, which I now played bishop d3. Yeah, and it's. Uh, Mate in a couple of moves. Yeah, if king f4 here, then just g3. g3. I think you can actually play just f4 yeah, for f4 now. f4 is mate, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was a free hands position. You there, are, there are many other mates. Knight e2 is all, no, he can take it, but, uh, queen h2, for example, queen h2, king takes g5, queen h6 is also mate. There are, there are many mates, I'm sure. Oh, yes, yes. It's, it's pretty bad to have the king there. Yes. On, on move 17. Let's, okay. Uh, go 1997. Uh, you were playing actually black here against um, Robertson. Barnet against Watford. So you were playing for Barnet. And you just played okay. knight takes d4. And I've got, a good, I've got a good position out of the opening. That's quite clear. My knights are very really nice and mm. uh, his king is slightly exposed. But he comes up with, with a tactic mm. here which doesn't really seem to work. He plays knight takes d5. Yeah. If I just take it, then c3. And actually, white could actually be better. I think the engines were saying white was a bit better. Well, I doubt that very much. <laughs> Don't believe what engines say. Well, anyway, it's not too bad for white. Um, yeah. But uh, instead, you played. I played uh, queen c5. Because I see he's now opened up the diagonal from h1 to a8, which causes his downfall. So he played knight c3, um, and I went queen c6 check, king h2, queen f3. Now I'm threatening mate on f2 and his bishop, and and uh, mate on h3. Yes. So naturally he played bishop g3, which defends against all of these. Yes. But now oh, I... This is really super cute, actually. So Well, I'm the end is. Uh, well, even here, I think this move, to me, is very, very attractive. Uh, I wonder if our YouTubers spot it. If we give 10 seconds here, you might want to pause the video, starting from now. Okay, uh, it, you played rook takes h3 check. Rook takes h3 check. So you get the king to be He has to, has to take, obviously. Otherwise, rook, I take on h1 mating. So he has to take. And now I play uh, King D7. Very elegant. Getting the other rook in to uh, the H file. Mm. And he played, he played a most logical defender, which is to give up his queen. Queen G5. Rook H8. Queen H4. So you took that. Rook takes King. This still doesn't look too bad. He's actually um, got two rooks for the queen here. Mm. And it's not obvious that I'm much better, but I've got a very nice finish in this yeah. position. Yeah. Very elegant, I think. Um, so I played uh, knight f5. Yeah. And now if he takes that, then queen h5 is made. Very nice. Yeah. So uh, going back, he... Uh, so he plays king h3. He plays king h3. And now, um, very nice finish, I play knight c to e3, putting the other knight on breeze. Yes. And he resigned here. Yeah, and, and he, he resigned. So if if takes here... If take, then queen h5 is uh, is mating. Bishop h4, queen g4. Oh, yes. King h2, queen g2. Yes. And of course if he takes on e3, then just queen takes g3 is made. Yes. So there's not much you can do here. And, and there's no defence against all the threats like Queen G2 and if, 
if pardon me, if rook this one. Well, then I can just play queen takes g4, and again I made one the h file. Yeah. Well, these knights really work well with the queen, actually. Yeah, that was really good stuff, Paul. I mean, this is really great. Uh, I hope I hope everyone enjoyed that. I I certainly did. It's it brilliant. Um, okay, some combinations from my uh, early uh, part of my career. Yeah. And, and maybe we'll do some uh, some more later. Who knows? Yeah, that's great stuff. Okay, thanks thanks for that, Paul. Um, hope everyone enjoyed it. Comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks Thank you, much. and bye-bye. Thanks very much.